Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Prachi and it's time for Whip and Read where Whip stands for Work in Progress and I'm going to work on Diamond Art Club's Alice in Wonderland by Jojo's Art. I can put up the image somewhere on the screen. Also, I will link all the videos related to this diamond painting in the info card up above in the i section. So if you guys are interested, please go ahead and take a look at them. So while I diamond paint, I am going to read you guys through the next chapter from the book Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. So grab whatever that you guys are working on and come along and work with me or sit back, listen to the story and watch while I diamond paint. So let's get started. Chapter 2 The Pool of Tears Curiouser and curiouser cried Alice. She was so much surprised that for the moment she quite forgot how to speak good English. Now I am opening out like the largest telescope that ever was. Goodbye feet. For when she looked down at her feet, they seemed to be almost out of sight. They were getting so far off. Oh my poor little feet. I wonder who will put on your shoes and stockings for you now. Dears, I am sure I shan't be able. I shall be a great deal too far off to trouble myself about you. You just manage the best way you can. But I must be kind to them, thought Alice. Or perhaps they won't walk the way I want to go. Let me see. I will give them a new pair of boots every Christmas. And she went on planning to herself how she would manage it. They must go by the carrier, she thought. And how funny it will seem sending presents to one's own feet. And how odd the direction will look. Alice's right foot, a square, heart rug near the fender with Alice's love. Oh dear, what nonsense I am talking. Just at this moment, her head struck against the roof of the hall. In fact, she was now rather more than nine feet high. And she at once took up the little golden key and hurried off to the garden door. Poor Alice, it was as much as she could do lying down on one side to look through into the garden with one eye. But to get through was more hopeless than ever. She sat down and began to cry again. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, said Alice, a great girl like you. She might well say this, to go on crying in this way. Stop this moment, I tell you. But she went on all the same, shedding gallons of tears until there was a large pool all around her about four inches deep and reaching half down the hall. After a time, she heard a little pattering of feet in the distance and she hastily dried her eyes to see what was coming. It was the white rabbit returning, splendidly dressed with a pair of white kid gloves in one hand and a large fan in the other. He came trotting along in the great hurry, muttering to himself as he came, Oh, the Duchess, the Duchess, oh, won't she be savage if I have kept her waiting? Alice felt so desperate that she was ready to ask help of anyone. So when the rabbit came near her, she began in a low, timid voice, If you please, sir, the rabbit started violently dropped the white kid gloves and the fan and scurried away into the darkness as hard as he could go. Alice took up the fan and gloves and as the hall was very hot, she kept fanning herself all the time she went on talking. Dear, dear, how queer everything is today and yesterday things went on just as usual. I wonder if I have changed in the night. Let me think, was I the same when I got up this morning? I almost think I can remember feeling a little different. But if I am not the same, the next question is, who in the world I am? 
ah that's the great puzzle and she began thinking over all the children she knew that were of the same age as herself to see if she could have been changed for any of them i am sure i am not ada she said for her hair goes in such long ringlets and mine does not go in ringlets at all and i am sure i can't be mabel for i know all sorts of things and she oh she knows such a very little besides she is she and i am i and oh dear how puzzling it all is i will try if i know all the things i used to know let me see 4 times 5 is 12 and 4 times 6 is 13 and 4 times 7 is oh dear i shall never get to 20 at that rate however the multiplication table don't signify let's try geography london is the capital of paris and paris is the capital of rome and rome no that's all wrong i am certain i must have been changed for mabel i will try and say how dot the little and she crossed her hands on her lap as if she were saying lessons and began to repeat it but her voice sounded hoarse and strange and the words did not come the same as they were used to do how dot the little crocodile improve his shining tail and pour the waters of the nile on every golden scale how cheerfully he seems to grin how neatly spreads his claws and welcome little fishes in with gently smiling jaws i am sure those are not the right words said poor alice and her eyes filled with tears again as she went on i must be mabel after all and i shall have to go and live in that pokey little house and have next to no toys to play with and oh ever so many lessons to learn no i have made made up my mind about it if i am mabel i will stay down here i will be no use there putting their heads down and saying come up again dear i shall only look up and say who am i then tell me that first and then if i like being that person i will come up if not i will stay down here till i am somebody else but oh dear cried alice with a sudden burst of tears i do wish they would put their heads down i am so tired of being all alone here as she said this she looked down at her hands and was surprised to see that she had put on one of the rabbit's little white kid gloves while she was talking how can i have done that she thought i must be growing small again she got up and went to the table to measure herself by it and found that as nearly as she could guess she was now about 2 feet high and was going on shrinking rapidly she soon found out that the cause of this was the fan she was holding and she dropped it hastily just in time to save herself from shrinking away altogether that was a narrow escape said alice a good deal frightened at the sudden change but very glad to find herself still in existence and now for the garden and she ran with all speed back to the little door but alas the little door was shut again and the little golden key was lying on the glass table as before and things are worse than ever thought the poor child for i never was so small as this before never and i declare it's too bad that it is as she said these words her foot slipped and in another moment splash she was up to her chin in salt water her first idea was that she had somehow fallen into the sea and in that case i can go back by railway she said to herself alice had been to the seaside once in her life and had come to the general conclusion 
that everyone you go to on the english coast you find a number of bathing machines in the sea some children digging in the sand with wooden spades then a row of logging houses and be behind them a railway station however she soon made out that she was in the pool of tears which she had wept when she was 9 feet high i wish i had not cried so much said alice as she swam about trying to find her way out i shall be punished for it now i suppose by being drowned in my own tears that will be a queer thing to be sure however everything is queer today just then she heard something splashing about in the pool a little way off and she swam nearer to make out what it was at first she thought it must be a walrus or hippopotamus but then she remembered how small she was now and she soon made out that it was only a mouse that had slipped in like herself would it be of any use now thought alice to speak to this mouse everything is so out of the way down here that i should think very likely it can talk at any rate there's no harm in trying so she began oh mouse do you know the way out of this pool i am very tired of swimming about here oh mouse alice thought this must be the right way of speaking to a mouse she had never done such a thing before but she remembered having seen in her brother's latin grammar a mouse of a mouse to a mouse a mouse o oh mouse the mouse looked at her rather inquisitively and seemed to her to wink with one of its little eyes but it said nothing perhaps it does not understand english thought alice i dare say it's a french mouse come over with william the conqueror for with all her knowledge of history alice had no very clear notion how long ago anything had happened so she began again o u s the machat which was the first sentence in her french lesson book the mouse gave a sudden leap out of the water and seemed to quiver all over with fright oh i beg your pardon cried alice hastily afraid that she had hurt the poor animal's feelings i quite forgot you did not like cats not like cats cried the mouse in a shrill passionate voice would you like cats if you were me well perhaps not said alice in a soothing tone don't be angry about it and yet i wish i could show you our cat dina i think you had take a fancy to cats if you could only see her she is such a dear quiet thing alice went on half to herself as she swam lazily about in the pool and she sits purring so nicely by the fire licking her paws and washing her face and she is such a nice soft thing to nurse and she is such a capital one for catching mice oh i beg your pardon cried alice again for this time the mouse was bristling all over and she felt certain it must be really offended we won't talk about her any more if you had rather not we indeed cried the mouse who was trembling down to the end of his tail as if i would talk on such a subject our family always hated cats nasty low vulgar things don't let me hear the name again i won't indeed said alice in a great hurry to change the subject of conversation are you are you fond of of dogs the mouse did not answer so alice went on eagerly there is such a nice little dog near our house i should like to show you a little bright eye terry you know with oh such long curly brown hair and it will fetch things when you throw them and it will sit up and beg for its dinner and all sorts of things i can't remember half of them and it belongs to a farmer you know and he says 
it's so useful it's worth a hundred pounds he says it kills all the rats and oh dear cried alice in the sorrowful tone i am afraid i have offended it again for the mouse was swimming away from her as hard as it could go and making quite a commotion in the pool as it went so she called softly after it mouse dear do come back again and we won't talk about cats or dogs either if you don't like them when the mouse heard this it turned around and swam slowly back to her its face was quite pale with passion alice thought and it said in a low trembling voice let us get to the shore and then i will tell you my history and you will understand why it is i hate cats and dogs it was high time to go for the pool was getting quite crowded with the birds and animals that had fallen into it there was a duck and a doodoo a lorry and a eaglet and several other curious creatures alice led the way and the whole party swam to the shore i will continue reading the next chapter in the next whip and read for this diamond painting that's it for today if you have any questions concerns put them down in the comment section below and i will get back as soon as possible also if you have enjoyed watching this video please consider giving a thumbs up and if you are not already subscribed please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video thanks for joining see you soon bye bye